Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a hyper casual game in Unity and welcome to episode 16. In this tutorial we're going to bring in a character which is going to be our player theoretically which moves along all of our platforms or ledges and we're also going to add a bit of randomization to whichever character we're going to use so we'll be able to not really choose but it'll decide which one we're going to play as. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. If you've enjoyed this series so far, please feel free to check me out on Patreon or YouTube memberships where you learn things like early access, exclusive content, project files and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So last tutorial I kind of touched on whether I wasn't sure whether I was going to just use like um, a sphere or whether I was going to use some kind of character. And I've done a bit of exploring um, this afternoon and this evening about what I'm going to choose. And I have stumbled across uh, this animal pack in the asset store. And it's free. Hopefully it's still free for you guys um, when you get to see this. It's very small. It's only 805 kilobytes. So I figured this would be pretty decent to use. So all I've done is just import it into my project file. Now, the whole idea of what we're going to do is we are going to have one single object, which is basically going to be um, the object we control. You know, we move from side to side and contained within that object is going to be one of these playable characters. So let's start with just one of them. So the first thing we're going to want to do is add in a new cube. So 3D object cube. Let's zero its position out. And let's bring it up and back to about there. So that's going to be the starting position. Now we will need to turn off the mesh renderer but we're not going to do that just yet because we don't want this to show as a cube, we want to show as a character. So that uh, package that I imported, if we go into meshes and you'll see that we have a chicken, condor and a dragon. So let's start with the chicken and all we're going to do is just drag and drop that chicken into the cube. It'll be a little bit too big for it as we begin, but we can reduce its size. You can see it is a little bit too big. So let's reduce the size in the transform component to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And it looks like it fits fairly well. So I'm just going to pull the chicken back a little bit. So it fits perfectly inside the cube. Probably worth pulling him down to the ground a little bit. So let's, let's turn off the mesh renderer now. And then let's go back to our chicken and just pull him down so he looks like he's flying just above the ground. And that should be just fine. So the next thing to do is we need to apply the animation to him. And the good thing is this package contains the animations. So let's just drag and drop that animation uh, controller onto the chicken over here. It's controller. Drag and drop. And if we press play now, <clears throat> we should be able to see the chicken plays animation is good. He doesn't move but we're going to code that when we have created a random generator to randomly select a player for us. So the next thing we want to do is let's add in the condor. So drag and drop onto the cube, not the chicken, the actual cube. Again reduce the size 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And he does look a little large, so maybe we shouldn't quite use this in the same way. Unless you want to make him much thinner, for example. So 0.1. In fact, 0.2 maybe. There we go. So if we turn the chicken off now. There we are. We can see that's a little better. So we might want to decrease the scale as well on the Z. 0.2. Oh, not for the chicken, obviously. That'd be a bit silly. On the condor. So 0.2. Okay, we're going to stick with that. And again, it's up to you whether you want to do the exact same thing I'm doing or not. It's It really is your game. I'm just showing you different things that you could possibly do. And the final one, the dragon. So let's drag him onto the cube as well. And let's reduce him. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Looks like we need to do the same kind of thing here. So 0.2 and 0.2. It does look a little bit small, so let's turn the condor off and let's increase him to 0.4, not the condor, done it again, the dragon, uh, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4
0.4. It does look a little big, so I'm just going to reduce him. That should do the trick. And I'm going to bring it down just a touch. So now if I turn all three on, you can see that they are roughly the same kind of size and in roughly the same kind of position. It's not going to matter too much right now. As long as they're in roughly the same position, it should all be okay. So now let's turn all three of those off. So let's create a script now, which will randomly generate which one appears inside this cube, which will be the player. So let's rename that cube to player object. And now let's create the script. So let's go to our scripts folder and in general, right click, create C sharp script. And I'm going to put char short for character and then gen G N short for generate. Let's open that up in Visual Studio. So the lines of code we're going to use here, we have used all of them elsewhere before. Um, so I'm not going to explain too much what we're doing. Hopefully you guys should be able to understand what we're going to do here. We're not going to use update. We are going to do this in start. And we're going to start with um, an array for the game object for each of those three characters. So public game object and then square brackets because it's an array. And we'll say char select semicolon. And next thing we'll do is we'll have a number to generate. So public int and we'll put char num semicolon. And what we'll do is we will say char num equals random dot range. And we'll go with zero for the first one, again, because this relates to the element number with our array in char select. And then three, because we want O, one or two to appear. And obviously three won't, but we put that there. Semicolon. And next thing we do is we say char select, which is right there in the list. And in square brackets, char num dot set active true semicolon and save so now let's head back into unity and let's apply that script to the global scripts object right there and then we set the char select to three and we have chicken as zero condor as one dragon as two and if we press play now one of them should generate for us and it is the condor so let's try that again and see what we get. Now we get the chicken. So one last thing we've got to do there is we need to add those animations to the condor. So let's go into the animations folder, drag condor onto its controller and same dragon. And let's just do a couple more times until we get the dragon randomized. There's the chicken again. And there's the dragon. Perfect. So I'm happy with that random generation. Um, should we add the background music to this as well? I think we should. So main camera, let's go to create empty and we'll have that as audio. And within there, create empty, we'll have this as a BGM. And I'm going to use the same uh, audio that we used before for the background music. So I'm just going to add that onto there. And we're going to have play on awake, loop, volume, 0.08, because I know it's quite high. Let's have the pitch as, let's have it as 1.4. And let's see what that sounds like right now. You can actually see everything generating there. That seems relatively okay, so I think I'm uh, happy with how that's going. So next thing we need to do is let's create a script which allows us to move our player object forward. So let's go back to our scripts folder and in general, right click, create C sharp script. And I'll put char move. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. Now this is actually gonna be a real simple script. There's not a lot to actually do with this to make it work. Um, we can get rid of this here. And we're going to have a variable, um, and I think we can probably 
use this variable to our advantage if we ever want to kind of speed up or slow down our character's movement. But for now, we're going to have this as public float and I'll put move speed semicolon. Uh, in fact, I will actually make that equal to three for now by default. So to make this work, we need to say transform dot translate. And basically what that means is it is telling the transform components that we need to do something, i.e. move forward. So that's exactly what we tell it. In brackets, we need to say vector three dot forward because that's where we're going. And basically we're going to do this using, um, how can I put it, using the time as a base. So much like we did with, um, I think we did it with the orbs, where we use the time, because on the timer, if you remember, if I go to that script, we use down here somewhere, is it? Uh, in subtract seconds. So we have to basically wait for a second and everything is going to be done via real time. Um, I don't think quite in the same sense, but what it basically means is that we multiply this by the actual time itself, going time dot delta time, and then we can multiply that by the move speed. And then we have to make it relative to the world around us, which means just putting space dot world, and then semicolon and save the script. So if we head back into Unity, and all we need to do is apply that char move to the player object, not the global scripts. So let's bring it over, and you can see here it is right there. So if we press play now, we should see the character generate and move forward. So everything looks like it's coming together. The last thing I want to do uh, before we actually check and test out this working correctly is add the main camera to the player object. And what that means is that the main camera will now follow the player object at all times. So if we press play now, we should see it move here in the game view. So it's become apparent that we are not generating fast enough right now. So that means to actually fix that little bug, we need to go to our global scripts and click on ledge generate. And let's change that from generating once every second to once every half a second. And that's that section down here, save. And hopefully if we press play now, we should never see the actual generation occur. It will always happen beyond the camera's view. So let's give it a go. Yep, so far so good. So you can see how this is all coming together now and it looks like it could be quite difficult in some scenarios. I guess it depends just how quick you are. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So, you probably noticed by now, there are a couple of things that we're gonna need to do. So next tutorial, what I plan to do is make the ability to move side to side. So if we're here and we need to avoid center, then we can tap left and we'd move left and we'd have right so we can move right. Um, that's gonna be interesting to create, to be honest, that should be interesting because we'll be able to see just how well this works. And once we've got that movement in place, it does also mean that we can then set sections to add score. So every ledge that we pass, we add, let's say 10 to our score. So until the next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.